Hey guys, it's Brian Storm. Recently, EA dropped over 70 international player the game cards. And in this video, I'm going to help you guys determine which of these international player the game cards are the best for you, the best for your team. And if you want to build a whole team around these, I can do that for you. We're going to break down all of the goalies. We're going to break down the best defensemen, the best centers, the best shooters, and put them all on a team, and then the rest of the guys are gonna be synergy plugs, so you can have all five team synergies activated. These cards, you're supposed to be able to pull them from bronze packs, but there was a little bit of an issue, quote unquote. So at the time of this year, they're no longer in packs, but hopefully they'll be back soon so that you can pull them yourself. Right now, there is an abundance of them on the marketplace, so they're going for a pretty cheap price. The most expensive ones, probably between 10 to 20K, the 87 overalls. Otherwise, you'll find your quick sell value at about 2500 To give you a good idea of what these kind of cards are, they're very fast, small players that have very powerful shots, but often inaccurate. They're Chell's version of glass cannons. You can't get faster players than these cards. We're going to start with the best goalies. There's only three goalies. And, well, I'm going to mention all three of them because they're all pretty amazing. The thing about these bronze goalies is they have four synergy points to help your team out. Carter Hart starts us off two points in Silky Smooth, one point in Thread the Needle, and one in AA. You have two great synergies there and one not-so-great synergy. But if you're trying to activate all three of those team synergies... It works out for you. Hellenin's the worst of the three goalies, as he doesn't have Silky Smooth or Thread the Needle, but if you're trying to build a team with probably all five synergies, then he is a good choice for that. Two points in Locker Room Leaders, the middle tier synergy, one point in AA and one point in CW. Despite that, he does have four points in team synergies, making him pretty desirable. The best goalie that you could have out of these three is definitely Gustafsson, who has three of the most desirable synergies, two points in Silky Smooth, one in Thread the Needle, and one in Locker Room Leaders. He is a must-have pickup for a backup goalie if you're building a solid squad with those synergies. I'd probably have Hart as the main goalie if you choose to build an international player of the game squad. From here, we're going to move on to the best defensemen, and the left defensemen are stacked, the left defensemen on the right side. You have Valimaki who with rocket skates and the two skating team synergies activated reaches 98 acceleration, 98 agility, 98 speed. He is six foot two, 200 pounds, which is insane with that speed. So I think he's a great choice to have on defense. The fifth overall pick, Jolivi, is also six foot two, but less weight on him. He's more sound defensively, but a little slower because he doesn't have rocket skates. Slower and smaller than the previous D-men, but sports an amazing stick-checking stat with 92. He also has one of the highest defensive awareness out of all these international player of the game cards, but that's not saying much when it's only an 85. Now on your left side, the defensemen that shoot right aren't actually defensemen, because all of the right defensemen actually suck. So we're not going to use any of them. We're going to start with Taylor Radish, a right winger, a big and tall forward with an excellent poke check and great speed. Up next, we have Shushko, maxed out stats with synergies, which is amazing for a defenseman, but a tall, fragile body at 6'0", 175 pounds. McLeod's a center, but we're putting him on defense. Decent speed and size and decent defensive abilities for international player of the game card, despite being a center. I found that all the right defensemen that are international player of the game cards, they're too small or too short. So I had to choose the big guys, the big forwards that are at least over six foot zero and can skate pretty well so that they can catch up even to the fastest cards in the game. Let's talk about the best centermen. These four forwards have 86 plus in faceoffs, making them the best choice for your centermen. And I made sure that they're fast as well. Heedle has maxed out skating with synergies, maxed out shot power as well, pretty much, but a light body at 160 pounds. Similarly, Dubé is also maxed out skating with sins, almost max shot power has higher stick checking and a heavier body at 182 pounds i don't want to repeat myself but kiru like the other guys has maxed out skating with sins and this card's strength is on puck control skills where they all hover around 87 at 141 pounds heponiemi might as well be a feather a really heavy feather maxed out skating again this guy should be your first line center he's got 96 d king has the best shot and passing out of all of the first wave of international player of the game cards making him quite a stud let's talk about the best shooters now alexander nylander 90 plus shot accuracy amazing at puck skills and ridiculous 
ridiculously fast is what you need to know about him. Sam Steele, in addition to his near 90 shot accuracy, his shot power is insanely high and he is really fast. Yamamoto max out speed and deking the sins means all those crazy dekes you dreamt of doing can be done at a fast pace. Abramov similar to Steele but with deking skills to complement him as well. So now I'm going to take all of the top players that I showed you guys, put them on a team so we can see how it all fits together. Now, the guys that I showed you, they're not the only, like, best cards, but I thought that they were the best cards in that particular category, whereas other cards might be lacking in something that uh, I found to be important for their position. So, like, defensemen, if they're too small, don't really want them. Regardless... Down here, we have uh, four synergy plugs that I put in that we're going to get into a little bit later. But here we have the four centermen that I picked out. We have the four best shooters. It happened to work out that two of them are on the left side, two of them are on the right side because these guys are righties, these guys are lefties. Over here, all the left defensemen on the right side and all the players where your right defensemen would be are all forwards that are righties. If we look at synergies... We have only Rocket Skates activated on player synergies. So what I notice is that these cards are very heavy in team synergies over anything. If I go to team synergies, we have 15 points, Silky Smooth, 16 in Thread the Needle, 10 in Angry Aggressors. It's quite interesting, really. I think it might also be an effect of choosing like the fastest players, so that's why um, those type of synergies are put on them. So with these last four choices, I've decided that we can definitely fill out locker room leaders and concrete wall just so that all of your players have all of these additional bonuses. Locker room leaders will give discipline, endurance, offensive awareness, and poise. We already have angry aggressors for aggression and stick checking mostly. And concrete wall has defensive awareness and who cares about all that other stuff. So... If I put these four synergy plugs, the four synergy plugs are Yoki Haru, Reichel, kind of like Eichel, but Reichel, Formanton, and Studenic. And these guys have Concrete Wall, Concrete Wall, Concrete Wall, and Locker Room Leaders. I also want to mention that as a coach, we have the Concrete Wall coach because we didn't want to put any more players with Concrete Wall, so we'll, we'll give them the three points there. Okay, let's talk prices, but before we do that, I did want to mention that Iginla could be anywhere on this team as well, but I didn't really count him among the International Player of the Game cards that were released just because, well, he's the highest overall card then, and looking at his stats, he is definitely the best card out of all of them, but it goes for much higher price because he's harder to pull. So, prices. The most expensive card on this team is Hefo Niemi at 25k. I told you that he's the best card outside of Aginla, and that's why he goes for the most. Steel, Yamamoto go for 20k a piece. That's total of 65k. Then there are a lot of cards that go for 15k. We have Nylander, we have the two goalies, and we have all of the left defensemen on the right side. And look at that, they're all Finnish, which is pretty cool actually. So that's another 120k, 185k total. Then there are another three cards that go for 15k each. That's Abramov, Heedle, and Dubay, which is going to bring it up to 230,000. Kiru, the lonesome guy that goes for 10k in this squad. And then everyone else, the synergy plugs, these 86 overalls, and Shushko, they go for 5k each. And this whole squad can be built for 275,000 gold doubloons. And you will never really lose a race with these cards because they are so fast. Just watch out for the shots. They're often inaccurate. Those one-timers, also inaccurate. But if you get them on breakaways, then you should be fine. That's what you should be going for with this squad. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you end up building this team yourself. Let me know how they play, and I'll see you guys in another video.